locally with family and friends. House of Destiny International Ministries presents Senior Pastor Dr. Larry Manley with today's message of a spiritually vibrant connection with God. We hope that you enjoy the viewing. The Word of God tells us in Revelation, the 21st chapter, verse 9, the title of this message is Positioning Yourself for a Thing Called Eternity. I'm going to say it again. Positioning Yourself for Eternity. How many of y'all know that eternity awaits us? You see? Now, 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 the Word of God says that we are to position ourselves for eternity this place of eternity. So for those of you that didn't get a CD last week, you need to get it from last week so that you can keep up because I, I don't have time to go back through that. But where I want to start at is that he says that that angel came. We know that angel is one of the fellow brothers and one of the, the, the fellow brethren and servants of the Lord. He had been resurrected, turned into an angel, and then it's going forth from there. The Bible backs it up. We took you to the Word. We showed you in the Word. And if I showed it to you in the Word, that should be good enough for you. Get your mind out of it. Come out of your mind. Come out yourself, you know. Because you get to playing around up in there, that thing will run you crazy up in there. Come on up out of there. Get out of there. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, The angel came and talked with me. And it said, saying, Come hither. And I will show thee the bride or the wife, which is the wife of the, the lamb or the bride of the lamb. Right? Says something like that, right? Now look here. Notice that word come hither. There's a positioning taking place. Come hither means that in order for you to see what and who the bride is, you got to come from where you are to where God telling you to be. Positioning. You can't stay over there and get what's over here for you. You understand what I'm saying? You can't do it. If that would have been possible, then guess what the angel would have told John? You can just stay right there and I'll show it to you. Huh? But no, he didn't say that. He said reposition yourself. Come hither. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, there's a movement with God. And you got to be willing to move with God. If you're not willing to move with God, guess what? Lot's wife was immobilized. Because she wasn't willing to move with God. Because she kept looking back. She kept looking back at her faults. She kept looking back at her desires. She kept looking back at those things that she wanted in the world. See, she became immobilized. I call it being stuck like Chuck. Amen. And because of that, she became a pillar of salt. In other words... We are the salt of the earth, but we are moving. But now she had immobilized herself. See, she wasn't no more good for nobody, especially when you're on the move. Somebody say, we're on the move. We're on the move. And you better be ready to move with us because those that are lagging behind, guess what's going to happen? Agag going to get you. Amalek. Amalek is the one that waited on Israel as they was coming, waiting on them laggers, them, them slow walkers, the ones that don't want to, you know, that put everything else before God when they, them kind. See, see, Amalek, he loves them kind. And things ain't going to work in your life until you get it right. See, see things ain't going to work. Just ain't going to work. See, because Amalek is always there to take you down. You see? That's what Amalek is there to do. So don't never put your trust in money or your job or, 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 or the ratings or the television, no, 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 it's all good. You know, that's God's territory. 
but our territory is to remain in a relationship with him. Amen. In the midst of everything that he's doing, it takes a cool head to win a hot game. Amen. He said, come hither, reposition. You got to reposition yourself. He said, if you come here, then I'll be able to show thee the bride. He said he's going to show him the bride, the lamb's wife, right? Mm -hmm. So he carried, verse 10 says, he carried me away in the what spirit? To a great and high mountain and showed me the great city. I thought he was going to show me the bride. Wait a minute, something's going on here. The holy Jerusalem. He's showing me the bride. He said, so, but, but he took me and he showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven and from God. First thing he did was he took him on another journey. He had to leave and come hither. He had to reposition himself, right? When he repositioned himself, then God took him up in the spirit. That's another positioning. You understand what I'm saying? See, I say you got to reposition yourself. You got to position yourself for eternity. See, a lot of people think that they've got eternity just because they've become in the position of salvation. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. You get there to get taken in the spirit to the place where you need to be. You can't get somewhere if you don't see it or know where you're going. How you going to get there? Do you think you're just going to stumble up in heaven? Do you think that you're just going to stumble up in the bosom of God in eternity? No, no, no. There is a way. It's called the straight and narrow path. You know what I'm saying? Line upon line, precept upon precept. Throw your religion out there. I, I, religion ain't welcomed in here. I said religion ain't welcomed in here. Amen. TV, religion ain't welcomed in here. Nothing but the kingdom. It's the kingdom of God. That's all we're concerned with. We're not concerned with anything else. I don't care nothing about what's on the internet, what this person said, what that person said. No, no, no. We're only concerned with what Jesus is saying. Amen. Positioning yourself for eternity. God said, and he carried me away once I obeyed and came hither to him. He carried me away. Why? Because the angel represents a messenger of God, and God had a message for him. He said, I'm going to show you the bride, the wife of the lamb, the bride of the lamb. I'm going to show it to you. Then he came, and he took him up in the spirit, took him to a great and high mountain. That means he had to take him to a high revelation. He didn't take him to a plain. He didn't take him to a hill. The Bible says he took him to a great and high mountain. That means he had to, you, 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 you got to go further than religion. You got to go further than your denomination to get this. You understand what I'm saying? You got to be ready to go. Turn yourself loose from all your preconceived ideas and emotions and thoughts and theological jargon and all that. You got to get rid of that. Come hither and I will show thee the wife the bride of the lamb. I'll show it to you. So he says here, he took him up in the spirit from position to position. Took him to a great and high mountain and he showed me that great city. We know that word city means an encounter with something. Here we are seeing the great city is a great encounter with God. It's called the holy Jerusalem, which is the bride of Christ. That's us, ain't it? Do you know who you are? Hello, New Jerusalem. Hello. That's what he said. He said here in verse 9, he's going to show thee the bride. That's what he said. Then he come back, and what does he do? He shows him the New Jerusalem. Well, he's showing you the bride. Oh, we're going to walk down the streets of gold. You don't even know what that is. You don't even know what that is. You done told folk a lie. Got folk all screwed up. What does the spirit have to do with Gold Street? Oh, please. You need to understand what the gold means, right? Amen. How many of y'all know understanding is the best thing in the world? Amen. I'm going to tear your religion up this morning. I'm going to tear that head up this morning. Yeah, buddy. I'm going to smoke you this morning. Smoke them. YouTube TV, lay. I'm going to smoke that head this morning. 
high. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, the holy Jerusalem. See, see, Jerusalem is the city of peace, the peace of God, the new peace of God. We talked about, say, it's a holy place. And guess what? We are that holy place. We are that bride, right? According to this. I don't care nothing about theology. I'm talking about what this says. Kidding about all. I'm going to smoke me something this morning. I'm going to smoke something. Verse 11 says, Having the glory of God. Mm. And watch this. Now, now it's this new Jerusalem, which is us, that's got this glory of God. And it said, And her. Called it a her with a bride. Say, 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 And her light was like unto a stone that was most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Well, here's Revelations. The stone represents something, a thoughts that build. We're building spiritual temples. So we see that the new Jerusalem is all about your thinking process. What kind of thoughts are you using to build a temple? Are you using anger? Are you using frustration? Are you using infidelity? Are you using this or are you using that? Are you using your job? Are you using your money? What are you using to try to build the temple with? The word of God goes on and says that it's a most precious stone. That means that this thought that builds the temple is a most precious stone and it's even like a jasper stone. Clear as crystal. Watch this. The jasper stone means brotherly love. So we build this temple with brotherly love. Amen? And it's got to be clear what we're building it with. That's why I say we're clear as crystal. So we got to know what we're building this thing with. Now, verse 16 says, and the city, watch this, lies four square. Four square represents the fact that it's total encounter with God. The city is an encounter with God, and it's full square it means that there's, this is going to be a total encounter with God. Are you with me, church? How many of y'all looking for a total encounter with God? See, see, a lot of people just want a, 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 a partial encounter with God. They own that what we call the installment plan of salvation. You know, they own what we call the installment plan of deliverance. You know what I'm saying? They up here every week. You've seen them in the churches. They come every week to get the installment plan of deliverance and healing and everything. I thought you got delivered last week, but here you are again. You got to do it all over again. See, that's the installment plan. But when God gives you that full encounter with him, he said the city lies full square. And the length is as large as the breadth, and he measures the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs, 12,000, 12 is the divine purpose of God. The length and the breadth and the height of it are all equal. The length is the length of God's love. God had to reach a long way to get us. Amen. The breadth is the breath of his holiness. It's equal with his love. His holiness is equal to his love. And the height, the height of his wisdom is equal. His love, his holiness, and his wisdom are all equal. One ain't longer than the other. One ain't rounder than the other. Can't do it. So what I'm trying to say, church, is you, you can get around me and you can get around man. How are you going to get around God? Wow. Heard that from a long time back. Man spoke words of wisdom to me when I was acting a fool. How are you going to get around God? See, it's good for somebody to tell you the truth about yourself. You know what I'm saying? It don't make no difference how you feel about it. You'll get over it. You can't be a preacher if you ain't willing to tell people the truth. Amen. You can't be a preacher if you're worried about who's going to be mad at you. Who cares who's mad at you? You, know, you just do your job. You do your assignment. And you do it with excellence. Amen. And don't be scared to call the shot. And if it ain't right, get it right. And be man enough to do it right. And if everybody ain't wit right, then that which ain't wit right will get with wrong. Go on, get just keep coming back. Just keep coming back. You'll be all right. Verse 17 says, And he measured the wall thereof. Mm -hmm. That wall is a place of protection. It was 144 cubits counted. 
1 plus 4 plus 4 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 9. 9 is the Christed man, the bride of Christ, the Christed man. See? You see what it's doing? And it's got a protection around it. What is that holy encounter with peace? You see? We're wearing it. Y'all follow me so far? Now watch this. Here's the trick. Verse 17. And he measured the wall, the protection thereof, 144 cubits. I told you what that was. It equals to the number nine, Christ man. But look, at it was according to the measure of a what? Oh. But he didn't stop there. So he's really measuring a man, ain't he? Or is he? Watch this. That is of a what? Oh, did you catch it? See, position. He ain't a man no more. <laughs> you see it, don't you? Positioning. You see it, don't you? Yeah, but it's going to smoke you. Verse 18 says, And the building of the wall of it was jasper, because that's how we protect one another through brotherly love. Jasper is brotherly love, remember? That's our protection. People, it don't make no difference what you know, what you got, where you are in this thing. It don't make no difference about that. If you don't have brotherly love, you got nothing. Right. Amen? Amen? See, it's brotherly love that we protect one another with. We're not against one another. We just want things done the right way. Amen? Amen? You see, average, we've been average so long till we don't want we want to stay average. No. I refuse to stay average, and I refuse to stay, let those that are under me stay average. I'm going to push you to the limit because we're in that season. See, I'm confident enough in God to know that if I just keep preaching this word, he's going to always have what I need and who I need to get the job. It says here, the, in verse 18, and the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city, watch this, this encounter was pure what? Gold. Like unto clear glass. Pure gold represents, the, gold represents the purity of the spirit. All spirit. All spirit. Pure. God don't have no need for this. God can't use this. This is just the symbol of what God really is. Gold. Pure gold. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. You know? So you can't get tripped out on this because this ain't what he's talking about. You can't get... Look, don't believe all the stuff that the paper writes about you. Because the same one make you or kill you. Amen? They catch you wrong, you're through. Same one. Watch verse uh, 19. And the foundations of the wall. You know, everything got to have a foundation, right? Amen. And the foundations of the wall of the protection of the city, which is the encounter, was garnished. It was prepared with all manner of precious stone. Now, the first foundation, there are 12 foundations. We're talking about man's temple, the holy Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. It's the new thing that God is going to do in you, positioning yourself for eternity, okay? Now, in us we have these 12 foundations. Each foundation is what we build the wall on, okay? See it? Now, because, see, what we don't understand is that it's, all, it's God. It's God throwing his anointing out. And whoever got sense enough to catch it, man is in such a crazy way within himself that he will buck God. If he could shoot God, he would shoot him. That's how crazy man is. Because so that's what he's trying to do when he won't let you have prayer in school or he won't let you have the Ten Commandments. Or he's trying to shoot God. That's what he's doing. So these are the 12 things that it takes to, 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 to build that wall. Brotherly love, faithfulness, confidence, hope, bliss, acceptedness, spiritual protection, creative intelligence, righteousness, eternal presence, the wisdom of discernment, and the peace of God. You, 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 you can do a study on all of them and learn even more about yourself.
and what you need to do and how you need to do it. In order to build it, you got to learn how to read the blueprint. You can't, you'll, you'll build something with towel. It'll be crooked. Then you'll call it a masterpiece. You crazy. That's a fool that built that. Got it leaning. And they call it a masterpiece. That's man's warped mind. That's his old crazy self. And then we follow, oh, that's a masterpiece. You crazy too. You crazy the one that made it. And what I'm trying to say, church, to you is that you can't listen to everything. You can't believe everything you hear. You can't believe everything you see on the news and repeat everything you see on the news. You don't know jack nothing about nothing, and then you running with it, talking about this person and that person. You don't know nothing about it. You ain't in it. You ain't, you ain't in the oven. How you know how hot it is? It's easy to stand on the, and run that lip, but when it's time for you to get up and do something and get shot at, oh, no. I ain't doing that. Oh, no, I don't want to be, I don't want, I just want to do things at my convenience. I don't want no demands put on me. Well, guess what? Death is going to put a demand on every one of us. Death is. It ain't no way around it. You will not get up out of here except through that portal. So you might as well ante up and get ready, get ready, get ready. You might as well. You might as well. Because it ain't nothing to play with. It ain't nothing to play with, people. It's coming. But guess what? It ain't nothing to be afraid of. It ain't nothing to be afraid of. One of these, the Saudi stone me, accept it. We have to learn how to accept the things that are going to be. And then we can grow in the grace of God from that. Looking good. And the last one, and we right on time. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Now, here we go. This is deep here. We've got, he said no temple. Right now, the temple is inside of us, right? Some of y'all old heads, y'all been taught this, so I'm going to throw this back out here and reiterate it. In the book of Revelation 12th chapter, it talks about a man child being birthed. A lot of people think that's Jesus. That's not Jesus. That's us. Every time you get saved, a man child is birthed, and the devil is there trying to get it. And I told you all about the man child. The man child goes up top. You birthed it, and that which you birthed, you have to feed. Because it's Biblically, unbiblical um, cord is connected to it. A thing in the, in, the, in the 12th chapter of Ecclesiastes talks about the silver cord. You hear me? If it's ever disconnected, man dies, okay? All right. Now, when this, see, see this is where the church folk can't, they can't rise this high. You see? They can't understand that when they got saved, truly saved, you birthed something called a man-child that went up top so it could be protected and it could grow. Your man-child came out of you, all right? When you feed the diet of the Word of God through that silver cord, that unbiblical cord that is connected to, that man-child grows. Or when you don't feed it, it dies, it withers away. Now, if the man-child withers away, then when you die, you ain't going to have nothing to put on. Because that's your garment. That, you, that white raiment that they're talking about, that's it. That's it, people. And if you don't build it, and feed this thing right, you're not going to be able to step into it. So what you birth and salvation is going to birth you in the end time. See how it reversed? 
right now we're the temple, right? He said, ain't no temple. That's what he said, right? He said, ain't no temple. Now, what it is, that man child that you birthed in is just like God. You hear me? Now, that's that thing that you wham, and now it ain't in you. It's wearing you. Now it's wearing you. You birthed it, but now it's going to birth you. So this is a heavy situation because now that man child is like God the fool with full of the, the fullness of it is dwelling of the father and the lamb is dwelling in it. So now there's no need for a temple. Except God himself. Because God will fully absorb you. You understand? So there's no need to have a temple anymore. There's no need for us to be traveling around in the universe and build the universe in a physical New Jerusalem. See, we don't understand what this word is. This is a supernatural word this, that God, this ain't, Lord have mercy. Now y'all see how far the church is behind, do you? And they refuse to teach the truth because most of them don't know what the truth is. And then there are some that fight the truth and don't want the people to know the truth. National Ministries presents Senior Pastor Dr. Larry Manley with today's message of a spiritually vibrant connection with God. We hope that you enjoy the viewing. The Word of God tells us in Revelation, the 21st chapter, verse 9, the title of this message is Positioning Yourself for a Thing Called Eternity. I'm going to say it again. Positioning Yourself for Eternity. How many of y'all know that eternity awaits us? You see? Now, 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 the Word of God says that we are to position ourselves for eternity this place of eternity. So for those of you that didn't get a CD last week, you need to get it from last week so that you can keep up because I, I don't have time to go back through that. But where I want to start at is that he says that that angel came. We know that angel is one of the fellow brothers and one of the, the, the fellow brethren and servants of the Lord. He had been resurrected, turned into an angel, and then it's going forth from there. The Bible backs it up. We took you to the Word, we showed you in the Word. And if I showed it to you in the Word, that should be good enough for you. Get your mind out of it. Come out of your mind. Come out yourself, you know. 
Because you get to playing around up in there, that thing will run you crazy up in there. Come on up out of there. Get out of there. Amen? Amen? The Bible says, the angel came and talked with me. And it said, saying, come hither. And I will show thee the bride or the wife, which is the wife of the, the lamb or the bride of the lamb. Right? Says something like that, right? Now look here. Notice that word come hither. There's a positioning taking place. Come hither means that in order for you to see what and who the bride is, you got to come from where you are to where God telling you to be. Positioning. You can't stay over there and get what's over here for you. You understand what I'm saying? You can't do it. If that would have been possible, then guess what the angel would have told John? You can just stay right there and I'll show it to you. Huh? But no, he didn't say that. He said, reposition yourself. Come hither. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, there's a movement with God. And you got to be willing to move with God. If you're not willing to move with God, guess what? Lot's wife was immobilized. Because she wasn't willing to move with God because she kept looking back. She kept looking back at her faults. She kept looking back at her desires. She kept looking back at those things that she wanted in the world. See, she became immobilized. I call it being stuck like Chuck. Amen. And because of that, she became a pillar of salt. In other words, we are the salt of the earth, but we are moving. But now she had immobilized herself. See, she was no more good for nobody especially when you're on the move. Somebody say, we're on the move. And you better be ready to move with us because those that are lagging behind, guess what's going to happen? Agag going to get you. Amalek. Amalek is the one that waited on Israel as they was coming, waiting on them laggers, them, them slow walkers, the ones that don't want to, you know, that put everything else before God when they, them kind. See, see, Amalek, he loves them kind. And things ain't going to work in your life until you get it right. See, see, things ain't going to work. Just ain't going to work. See, because Amalek is always there to take you down. You see? That's what Amalek is there to do. So don't never put your trust in money or your job or, 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 or the ratings or the television. No, 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 no. It's all good. You know, that's God's territory. But our territory is to remain in a relationship with him. Amen. In the midst of everything that he's doing, it takes a cool head to win a hot game. Amen. He said, come hither, reposition. You got to reposition yourself. He said, if you come here, then I'll be able to show thee the bride. He said he's going to show him the bride, the lamb's wife, right? So he carried, verse 10 says, he carried me away in the what spirit? To a great and high mountain and showed me the great city. I thought he was going to show me the bride. Wait a minute, something's going on here. The holy Jerusalem. He's showing me the bride. He said, so, but, but he took me and he showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven and from God. First thing he did was he took him on another journey. He had to leave and come hither. He had to reposition himself, right? When he repositioned himself, then God took him up in the spirit. That's another positioning. You understand what I'm saying? See, I say you got to reposition yourself. You got to position yourself for eternity. See, a lot of people think that they've got eternity just because they become in the position of salvation. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. You get there to get taken in the spirit to the place where you need to be. You can't get somewhere if you don't see it or know where you're going. How are you going to get there? Do you think you're just going to stumble up in heaven? Do you think that you're just going to stumble up in the bosom of God in eternity? No, no, no. There is a way. It's called the straight and narrow path. You know what I'm saying? Line upon line, precept upon precept. Throw your religion out there. I, I, religion ain't welcomed in here. Amen. I say religion ain't welcomed in here. Amen. TV, religion ain't welcomed in here. Nothing but the kingdom. 
It's the kingdom of God. That's all we're concerned with. We're not concerned with anything else. I don't care nothing about what's on the internet, what this person said, what that person said. No, no, no. We're only concerned with what Jesus is saying. Amen. Positioning yourself for eternity. God say, and he carried me away once I obeyed and came hither to him. He carried me away. Why? Because the angel represents a messenger of God, and God had a message for him. He said, I'm going to show you the bride the wife of the lamb, the bride of the lamb. I'm going to show it to you. Then he came and he took him up in the spirit, took him to a great and high mountain. That means he had to take him to a high revelation. He didn't take him to a plain. He didn't take him to a hill. The Bible says he took him to a great and high mountain. 